Welcome back, True Seeker. Somebody asked, Zach, how do you afford to do this without having an income? And the only reason I can do this without having an income is because when I was younger, I earned a decent salary and I saved a lot of money and I minimized my expenses. I had a very affordable car. I had a very affordable rent. And I essentially eliminated all miscellaneous expenditures. When I was younger, I was dating a woman and she said, I don't get how you save money. I just don't know how to do it. And at the time, she had a better salary than I did. And I said to her, I said, well, you know, you spend your money here and there. You go to the coffee shop two times a day. You're always going and renting movies and buying new pair of jeans and new shirt. I said, just focus on some small things that maybe you don't need to do. I said, do you really need to go to the coffee shop two or three times a day? I said, imagine if you just go once a day and you stop going three times a day. Or better yet, you figure out how to stop going altogether. I said, look, if you go twice a day and you spend $5 each time, which is what she was doing, you're spending $10 on coffee plus a dollar on tax. So you're spending $11 five days of the week. So each week you're spending $55. And over the course of a month, you know, that adds up to $220 that you're spending at the coffee shop. And over the course of a year, that's times 12 more, you're spending $2,640 on coffee. Is it worth it? You know, for the person who doesn't have any money to take the vacation they want to because they haven't saved any, this is the difference right here. If you can figure out how to eliminate those extra coffee breaks out of your life, now you got the money for your vacation. And then consider, if you do this over the course of 10 years, you know, all of you are going to live 10 years as a working individual. If you save just that amount of money over 10 years, that accumulates to almost $30,000. So let's say you're out of high school, you're out of college, it doesn't matter. You're going to be around 30 years old after 10 years of working. And this is the age that a lot of people want to start looking for a house, you know. If you've saved up $30,000 in a lot of places in this country, that's a favorable down payment on a house. When you buy a house, you want to be able to put at least 20% down. Otherwise, you have to pay mortgage insurance, and that's expensive. Then you're spending a hundred and some extra dollars a month just on mortgage insurance. More money wasted. So look, that's just saving you know, $10, $11 a day. And in reality, most people can figure out how to save more than $10 or $11 a day based on how much money they spend. Imagine you're someone that goes out and gets two coffees a day, plus you pay for the expensive cable plan. I know all sorts of people who are broke who have all these channels they pay for in cable. Like their cable bills, 200 and some dollars a month. They could get rid of their cable altogether and save a bundle, or they could settle for a lesser plan and pay something like $60 to $80 a month. But look, let's just say you're that broke person that has every channel on your TV. Your cable bill is $250 a month. You're spending $5,000, or excuse me, $3,000 a year. You know, over the course of 10 years, that's another $30,000. Imagine that you eliminated your coffee and your cable bill. You know, you went to the used bookstore, picked up a used book for $1.50 per week and, and, and read that in your free time. <laughs> You're essentially looking at the person who did that. I, I didn't have cable from the time I was 18 years old until I was 30. And I wouldn't have cable at all, but my girlfriend really wanted to get it. I got it for her. Sometimes you got to do things for your, your lady, you know. But anyway... These are things people could be doing. You save the money on the cable bill. You save the money on the coffee over 10 years. You got $60,000 that you didn't have. You know, you blew it all on coffee and cable over the course of the last decade. A lot of people could drive a more modest car. You know, a lot of people could pick up a used Honda Civic that'll last them 10 years. 
for $5,000 or less. You got a uh, $5,000 Civic that you make payments on, you probably pay $100 a month or less. You know? A lot of people go out and get a car. I, I used to... <coughs> I used to teach, and there was a woman who taught in the building. She had all sorts of financial problems. And I felt bad for her because she had children that were my age, and she had all these bill problems. I would always front her money. And what I realized is she leased this super expensive car. And she rented this big old house. She paid for this big old house for her children to live in. She didn't need this nice of a car. She didn't need this big of a house. And here I am handing her money. Eventually, I had loaned her all this money. One day, I just told her, you know, I said, you know what? Just keep it. I said, just keep it. What you need to do is you need to figure out how to minimize your expenses. I, I just felt bad for this woman. I had plenty of money at the time. I said, you can keep the money. I said, but what you need to do is just learn to minimize your bills and you won't have all these financial problems. But for people who are, are leasing or, or have bought this way too expensive of a car, I mean, you might be paying 200, 300 extra dollars a month on an automobile than you need to. Let's just say you're spending 200 extra dollars a month on your car over the course of a year. What's that? That's another $2,400. You do that for a decade, that's another $24,000. You eliminate the cable bill, the overpriced car, the coffee. You've saved almost $100,000 over the last 10 years. You know, you learn to shop a little less. You learn to make a few more meals at home. There's so many ways you can save money. So anyway, these are all the things I've done and more. And in addition to saving, it's always good to be wise with your money. Make smart purchases. When you're going to use it, make sure you're not getting ripped off. Make sure you're not buying something that, you know, is expensive and you're not even going to care about in a month or a year. And now it's, it's like, you know, you're giving it away in a garage sale. You're selling it for nothing on Craigslist. Be wise with your money. The way I look at money is it's the thing that's meant to control us. And if you want to have more control over your life, you have to figure out how to be smart with this thing. And that was always my goal when I was younger. I realized that if I could be someone who wasn't in debt, if I didn't have a lot of bills to pay for, if I wasn't trying to like run on the treadmill every day to keep up with my bills, then I could do things in my life that I wanted to. And when I was planning this way, you know, I wasn't having the idea that, oh, someday I'm going to break the code on Gematria and then I'm going to spend four years of my life getting out the word so we can get free. So made. That wasn't the plan. But I mean, that's essentially what's ended up happening for me. And the only reason I've been able to do this is because of how I was living in the past. When I was 23 years old, I had a lot of money in my bank account. I had over six figures in my account. And that's because I had this job in real estate that paid really well. And I could have kept doing it and saved up even more money, but I felt bad about this job. It made me feel like a criminal. I've told this story before. I ended up quitting this job cold and I went and worked in a group home for $10 an hour to save my soul, essentially. Or at least make it feel like I saved my soul. But anyway, I had all this money. And it allowed me to do things like pay for grad school without taking on loans and getting more debt. If you save money, it allows you to do things that will save you even more money. Had I gone to grad school and gotten loans, you know, loans and interest make the bill way bigger. So I was able to minimize the cost of grad school. Also, because I had money saved up, it allowed me to buy a home and make it so that I had a very tiny payment on the home by putting down a significant chunk. Again, you want to be able to put down 20% on a home or more because if you don't put down 20%, you got to pay mortgage insurance. I was able to put down way more than that, make my mortgage payment super tiny, and minimize the interest expense. And also, again, it's about being intelligent. If you're going to buy a home, research the market the history of market values. I was working in real estate, so I understood a thing or two. And when I bought a home, I waited more than five years to buy the home. I, I saw that real estate values were going down. 
interest rates were going down. I waited until I thought it was about rock bottom. And I think I chose pretty well. I bought my home January 2012. Got the best interest rate. Got a rock bottom price. I just sold my home this past December for more than double what I paid for it in January 2012. You know? And... Again, all of these things only possible because I saved. Everyone can save money. You know? So, I just wanted to share this for the person like my ex-girlfriend who doesn't know how to save, who doesn't think it's possible. She did end up stop go going to the coffee shop. And she did end up getting quite a bit of money in her bank account. Because once she started saving there, she saw other places she could save. And... Um, you know, a lot of people, they, they got this American idea. Well, there's no point in having money if you're not spending it. That That's something that's taught to you that's just idiotic wisdom, if you will. The point of money isn't to blow it on shit. Most people think that's the point of money. That's just so stupid. Money is to control you. And again, you want to flip that around. You want to make it so that money doesn't control you. And... That's what I've been able to achieve. Still had to make money. Still had to be smart with it. But, you know, I have been here for four years now, not making an income from this, spending my time doing this with it. And I wouldn't recommend doing what I've done for the last four years to anyone because I'm not sure that's been the smartest thing. But it's been a desperate man's attempt at getting the word out and what's wrong with this world. And that's just something that I'm personally passionate about. So, I think I've made the point. Hopefully you can save some money. In the past, I've talked about shopping at discount grocery stores. You know, I think what you eat is really important. I'm not saying eat cheap and buy junk food and scrape by. But if you can find a discount grocery store, there's places that buy surplus from the larger stores and then they sell it for cheaper. So you can get that same organic food, but at a fraction of the price. It's another way to save money. I've always looked for things like that. Good deals. Ways to save extra. So we'll leave it there, true seeker. Until next time.